Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle video tutorial on Affinity Photo and the Diffuse filter. So here it is, go to Filters, Noise and Diffuse. It's also available in the Live Filter layers as well. So Diffuse there, what do you get? Well, you get this single panel. Doesn't seem like there's much. Basically it makes a lot of noise, but uses obviously the image, it diffuses it, makes it sort of dissolves it away. And you can push it up to the limits or maybe make it very subtle so you get a bit of a grayness there. You can still make the image out, but you can put it up to 100%. You can still see some blue sky there, but not very much. Or we'll put it down like that and click apply. But you can also do it for interactively across the document, so you can go backwards and forwards as well if you want to do that. Personally, actually the weird thing is you get more of the effect diffuse, even though it says 100%. I think that's completely can be ignored. That 100% there is not the same as when you get it really like that, which it still says 100%. Okay, let's just put it down a bit. Don't want it that far. Click apply. So you've got that design. Well, what you can do is always with all these filters, you can always go to filters and repeat diffuse. You can apply it a couple of times and then you can obviously make it completely vanish. Now, what you can also do, you can go to, and I'm just going to use the repeat now. Obviously, you can always go back to there at any time, noise and diffuse. But I'm just going to use repeat diffuse. So you can see it there. And what I can then do, I can use a layer and I can go to fade diffuse. So fade it. And what you can get, I'll just drag that out. It always puts it down there. <clears throat> There's always one of the slight bugbears I have with Affinity Photo. It always puts the panel in that corner. Why not in the middle of the screen? That's where I want it. I want to see it. I want to look down there all the time. Now, what you can do, you can obviously make it there 100%, or you can go that way. If nothing else, I wish they'd make it a preference so you could actually store it in that center. Please, if there's a, if someone knows how to actually fix it in the center, please put a comment. There is a preference or something for it. I would be over moon, because I would always want it put it in the same position. So. What you can do, you can go through the light and you can see all the various effects. And you can go to say like difference. I think that gives a nice creepy sort of horror book cover effect there. And of course you can fade it all the way or you can go that way. So click apply. And then of course what you can do, you can always go to filters and repeat diffuse again. So you can work with that effect there. And again, you can always go to there, layer, fade diffuse, and you can see the effect. And of course you don't have to keep it on that. You could go maybe to Put it back in the center again. Go to one of the other ones, and you can see you can create a variety of very different designs by doing that. So now I'm just going to put it back to there. What you can also do, you can use layers. So I'm just going to go to the move tool, and you can see over here in layers, and if you can't see that, view, studio, and uh, layers, there it is, and channels, they're useful. Now what you can also, oh, also macros. Macros are super useful. If you want to record all your various steps, macros are great, so you can always apply it again later. So what you can do with this, go over to a layer menu, and you can duplicate that. Now I'm not going to duplicate it, keep it the same. What I'm going to do, I'm going to resize it, because what I want to do is go, again, I'm just going to use repeat diffuse. I could go to noise and diffuse there, but just go repeat diffuse. So you can see what happens. It actually makes it sort of, you can see it's all, it's all completely dissolving away around the edges as well. And that's really great because what you can do now, and actually I could play again, if you're not happy with that diffuse, you can maybe do that. Or maybe go to layer and fade diffuse. And again, what you can do, you can just go there. You can go to maybe difference again. And you just try that out and you can see the effect there. It's a creepy sort of, uh, I think that would be brilliant as a horror cover. But what you can also do is you can, of course, go, you can apply again, hold down the alter option key so you can duplicate it to create a sort of, imagine you could have like four or five of these sort of designs across the image, different sizes, that sort of thing. Lovely horror book title, zombies in the whatever, <laughs> those sort of things. However, obviously I've watched too many zombie movies. Now, what you can also do, you can use other filters. So filters and distort and deform. My favorite menu, distort. I love the features in here, especially mirror, but deform is also pretty good. And you can add some pins to this. And you can distort it in all kinds of different ways. 
you can see what you can do. You can break it apart, make it fold over there, get some nice distortions, get distortion there. Now, the one thing, unfortunately, with this is try to avoid the edge. Easy said than done. But if you do get the edge, you can see what you can get. You can get a whole lot. And a bit of work and practice, you can get all kinds of different designs. Now, because see, oh, actually, this one wasn't too bad. Sometimes you do this and you suddenly get fun, it's cut off. And you think, oh. Anyway, what you can also do, of course, you can hold down the alter option key and you can duplicate it, design. And you can see you can create a very abstract, diffuse design with the deformed food. That really does look pretty uh, horrific. Oh, yeah, it looks quite something. That would be straight out of a HP Lovecraft sort of weird tales book. Anyway, what you can also do, of course, is you can always use diffuse again on that. So you can always go to filters and noise, and you can go to diffuse. And you can see then it really, really sort of completely, utterly. However, click apply, and then you can resize it, you can move that around. And then you can also go to filters and distort and deform again. Add some additional pins, drag that. You can see how you can really sort of drag the whole thing like that. And you can see they're great for clouds or very unusual shapes, just pull in the design, those sort of things. Also, what you of course can do, you can resize that. I'm just going to resize that. You can apply other filters as well. So filters, distort, and mirror. And I love this one. You can create sort of lovely mirror effects and see that design there. Load of different designs that way. Click apply and so and so on. Okay, let's get back to diffuse because now it's decided to do the mirror effect for something. Just going to go back all the way back through those, back to the original image. Now, back to the image and diffuse again. What you can do, you can use it with channels. Channels are really great as well. So you go to channels, again, view and, oops, I went a bit wrong, we went slow down then. View, studio, and channels. You've got channels there to select the red. So select the red channel. And then, of course, you can go to filters and you can apply the filters there if it's available for some weird reason. Oh, select a layer. There, channels, composite red. Now, filters, distort. So, noise, that's what I want. Diffuse. You can see it there. And you've got the effect there, intensity. And you can modify that intensity. Then, of course, Sometimes it's a bit disturbing when your system suddenly you're working away and then suddenly you can see it. So you slow down and suddenly you're thinking, what's it doing? I just noticed it then. I was thinking, very strange. And I said, my mind's going off thinking, that's very odd. Why is it dragging? It's just suddenly doing... The... Anyway, this is the green channel. And then what you can do, filters, and again, noise and diffuse. And you, of course, can see something else. And of course, you can apply other effects as well. So if you want to, go to filters and maybe blur. And let's go for Gaussian blur. Just blur that noise. So you get some really nice chunky grain there as well. That's another great feature of the diffuse new noise. Noise, not news. You got that lovely grain there, click apply. And again, it's still quite slow. It's not a very big document, very strange. However, you got over here and you can reset it. And you can see when you reset it, you can see the effect here where you've got this sort of red, purple, you've got the green, very unusual. And also at the same time, you can still use good old layer and fade, unfortunately, because I've used the uh, Gaussian blur, now and it allows that one. But you can again see by difference, you can try out different options there. So you can use add, vivid light, and create some very unusual, again, diffuse noise with the blur as well. Click apply. Okay, let's set it back to, now this is where I often go wrong, don't set it, reset it. So make certain you set it back. If you don't set it back, you will be working away and you'll be thinking, that's strange. It's uh, the red channel is active. Doesn't warn you or anything, so. So you go over here, you got this. What you can also do, you can use selections as well. So if you want to, you go over here, there's a whole load of selections, obviously rectangle, elliptical. No, I'm just gonna go with rectangle. I'm not gonna go, you could use freehand, so you create a quick selection. You can also, of course, use the select menu and there's color range, tonal range, create selections for that. But you can, what you can do, diffuse for that. So filters and noise and diffuse. 
and you can see it applied there. And again, you can vary that. So maybe create a very subtle. So you can just about make it out. Click apply. Then what you can do, select and then invert the pixel selection. So it just converts it so you get this area. Now what you can do, you can always go to filters again and noise and diffuse. And then this time you can really push it up there. So you get a very different effect one side there. And of course you can use feathering and all those sort of things as well. Or maybe change the position of the selection as well. That's another option. Now also what you can do, you can use shapes. So I'm just going to quickly shape one of your shapes. Um, doesn't particularly matter. I'm just going to go with donut tool. Just one. So donut tool. Once you've got that, what you can do, you can go to filters and noise and diffuse. And then you can see it completely evaporates it. Just that's about 67%. You can set it, say, like to there. Now that turns it into a pixel layer, so you can't do anything with it after that. So if you want to manipulate it, so you just got it here, and you think, you know what, I don't want that color. Let's go for red instead. And maybe, you know, maybe a stroke or whatever. What you can then do, of course, then you can go to filters, and again, unfortunately, repeat is lost at that point. But noise, diffuse, and you can see, you end up with that, so just keep it about there, so you can just about make that, click apply. And of course you can also still use fade if you want to use that, fade and diffuse. You can see more or less, maybe run through those, difference, exclusion and so on. So on. You can see a whole range of different options there, but let's go with that. Oops, right, what I want is that. What you can also do, of course, is hold down the alter option key and you can duplicate the design. Go to the move tool and just simply drag there so you can create a lovely sort of red rings all over there. Or of course, any shape you choose. And of course, you can always resize the design and then manipulate that. And of course, you can apply filter effects and other things. Maybe, let's just get rid of those. You got that. You can also use, of course, deform on that. So filters and Distort and deform. So again, you can just quickly go make a ring all the way around. I always love to uh, just do this and you just sort of try out different things and you can just sort of drag off little bits of it. So you always just, if you want the thing to be solid and stuck, but still pull bits off, you always just pin the whole thing. Put hundreds of pins. I don't know how many pins you can put, maybe 20 or 30. Just put it all the way around. And you can see because of the diffuse noise, you get this lovely sort of grain going off there. And again, you've got these blobs coming off. You can have a blob there, and another blob there, blob. Now, of course, you could have, I could have made the shape out of a gradient, or maybe a pattern design, or including an image or something. So you could get, you could get a real nice sort of design there. You can see you've created a sort of nice, and then of course what you can do, hold down the alter option gear again, and you can sort of drag that across, to create a nice, blobby, noisy effect like that. Right, also what you can do, I think I've pushed it too far there, go to the text tool, and I'm just gonna use very simple text, so letter A, always whatever, it always defaults it to very tiny, so you can't see it. So there, big A there, and you can of course use the filter there as well. So filters, again, not available there, so go down to noise and diffuse, and you can see what happens, it completely, you can make it completely evaporate, or just go to about there, and you can just about see it. And of course you can always play it again, and so on and so on, if you want to completely evaporate it. So another thing you can do, let's go to pattern layers. That's the next one. I'm just gonna use, now I'm not gonna use this image with pattern layers. I think it works better with, say, let's just go to another image. I've got another image here, and I'm just gonna use it diffuse here. So what I'm gonna do is go to a layer, now I could select a bit of it, let's just do that. Just select a bit of that, that sign there, that looks quite nice. And then go to a layer, and then new pattern layer from selection. And you can see what happens there. Now what you can do, you can go over here to the move tool, and then when you do that, you've got the, you can see the range for the pattern. There's the, there's the actual pattern itself there. But also you can go up here and you can set mirror. You've got other options here if you want to set those. Personally, really requires a very, and there's also an option here, open as a new document as well. So if you want to work it in a new document, that's good as well. 
must admit, I have never done that. However, it's always an option. Bilinear. So I'm just going to go with that. And also, you can set the... Uh, oh, interesting. Okay. Amazing. Sometimes I look at these things and I think, oh, I hadn't noticed that feature yet again. There's so many different features in Finity Photo. But what you can do, you can drag that around. And of course, what you can do, you can use Diffuse again on this. So again, filters, and again, noise, and diffuse. And you can see what happens. Of course, it diffuse all the way. And you can see the effect there. Click Apply. But you've still got this active. So you can see, you can resize it, rotate it, and all those sort of things, if you want to do that. Now I'm just going to, actually I'm just going to remove that layer. But what you can also do, of course, you can always go to here layer and you can rasterize it. So you've rasterized it, that's the pattern layer. So it's all completely frozen now. What you can do, of course, you can still go to repeat, diffuse, and apply it to that. And then of course what you can do, you can also use fade again as before and run through a number of options. And change that to create some very, very nice grainy sort of designs like that. Click apply. You can also use live filter layers. It's a non-destructive effect. Just layers that you can remove, edit at any point. So I've got this image here. What I can do, go to layer, then new live filter layer, and down to noise, and there is diffuse. Always puts the panel down there, as always. And then what you can do, you can change intensity. And you can see also you can use a blending mode, and it creates some very interesting difference. You can change obviously the intensity that way. See different designs you can create with that. Maybe change it to soft light, add, color dodge, and so on and so on. Also, you can use there, preserve alpha. So you can just try it out, depending on which one you want, and close. Now, the thing with live filter layers is you can still edit it. So we got over here to layers, and you notice here diffuse. It's connected to the background. It's not on top, it could be on top as well. You can simply, if you want to, you've got lots of different layers, you can simply drag it on top over there. You can still edit it again, double click, always puts it down there, even though I want it up here, and then change the setting. So you've got the color burn there, and you can change the intensity as well, as well as change that. And you can close it again. Now what you can also do, of course, is you can apply it to layers below. So I'm just going to quickly duplicate that one. So that's the background layer. I can just go to layer and duplicate. Now, because it's always awkward just to work with that, I'm just going to quickly go there and just resize it. Just want to resize it, do that. Now, I want this diffuse to be working on that one only. So what you can do is simply select there, and just drag onto that one there. If you get it just right, yeah. And you can just see it's just added to there. And now you can see the effect is slightly different. All right, it's done. It's not being applied to this, this background layer. So I'm just going to click up there, double click again, and then got preserve transparency. So you can see it, definitely see it there. So you've got the transparency. And you can just see uh, color burn. I'm going to go through there, normal. And you can see the effect just applied to that. If I do that, it's not it's spread out. Preserve alpha, then it's confined to that box for the layer. And of course, you can still use blend mode, change opacity, change intensity. And again, what you can do, of course, select there. It's a whole, it's a sort of group. And you can just duplicate that. So hold down the alter option key. And again, it's only applied to that layer. But of course, you can also manipulate this layer. So you can also go to maybe apply filter effects like filters and distort and deform. You can see you can distort that layer and create, but you've still got the live, still the live effect, even though the deform obviously is a pixel effect. You can see you can create some lovely bubbles of, I think, click apply. And you can see you can create that sort of design there. And again, it's still active though. The diffuse is still available. So if you want to, double click there, brings up that, and you can still modify that. And again, if you want to, you can always go to blending modes, go through, maybe change it to something like that, which is hue or difference. And create some very interesting color. And of course, you can always still just duplicate the design. So hold down the alter option key 
and just duplicate the design across the image like that. And again, all still live, other than obviously the deform. The deform was a filter effect that you can't now go back unless you just remove the effects. But you can also add multiple layers. And also, of course, you've got blending modes. So you can always go up here and then you can go through and set that difference as well. You can see the effect there, that's the difference. And then hold down that to create some. And of course, you can always apply other filters as well. So filters, maybe uh, Gaussian blur. Quite a nice blurry effect on that. Click apply and hold down it and so on. You can see what you can do. You can create a whole load of combinations, things. Now, not all the effects are live. But still, the diffuse is still diffuse is still available there. You can double click and you can change it. So if you decide, you know what, I want a different effect, I can change that and I can go through it. You can see it just changed there. Maybe go for divide, and then you still can see as you move that around. Hold down the alter option key. You can create a very abstract design like that. And of course, what you can still do, you can use, still use pattern layers if you want to use pattern layers and all those sort of things with all this, as well as, of course, still go and you could say, go here, merge visible, merge the whole lot into one single pixel layer. And it will take a few seconds, but you've got this lovely pixel design now, which you can then, of course, go and buy another one, filter, noise, and again, diffuse. And you can apply that if you want to. Maybe use again layer and fade diffuse to go through with this and maybe go for difference or color burn, or color dodge, hard light, and so on. So you can see a whole range of different possible effects. So you can create a really lovely design like that. And of course, once you're happy with that, you can then apply add additional diffuse as well on top of that and other effects, of course. Anyway, hope you found this tutorial interest. Otherwise, I continue forever. I could just keep working and working different ideas. Always adding new tutorials about Photoshop, Finity Photo, Finity Designer, Publisher, Critter, Illustrator, and many others. Also, if you've got any comments, please let me know in the comments. Always great. You know, maybe something you've spotted, especially that thing about the panel. If no solution to that, I would be so happy. However, I don't know why they put it down there. However, also a dislike or like. Always appreciated. Thank you much.